the shooting range. In this episode, pages of history, tanks versus ATGMs, arsenal, phantom family back in business, and metal beasts, forgotten firstborn jet. Well, the parade of new vehicles is now officially over. Time to dust off some old and unfairly forgotten machines. Like one of the first jets in history. And no, we don't mean the Schwalbe or the Meteor, because those are surely not forgotten. Today, we'd like to give another spin to the turbine of the HE-162, also known as the People's Fighter, the Salamander, or the Sparrow. Its power plant is a single turbojet engine installed above the fuselage. Self-sealing fuel tanks are found behind the cockpit and between the wing spars. Its fixed armament consists of two 20mm autocannons with a total ammo pool of 240 rounds. As a rule of thumb, we pick the most versatile planes for our Metal Beasts section. There's a lot to tell about them, and their versatility makes them useful for more of our viewers. The Salamander, however, is the opposite. It's a pure fighter, and it's pretty tricky to use if we're being completely honest. You could say this aircraft is an acquired taste, but it has its fans nevertheless. Now, what makes it special? The main feature of the Sparrow is a turbojet engine at a very low BR. The American P-59 is still the earliest jet, but this German plane isn't much higher. In practice, most of its opponents are prop planes, and not all of them are super advanced. And this helps the Heinkel's pilots enjoy the unique features of early jet aircraft. The contrast is better seen than with a Schwalbe or a Meteor. Those unique features include dynamics, climb rate, maneuverability, and all of these worse than on prop planes. Basically, the only advantage early jets have is their high top speed, and that's what you should build your strategy on. Take off, accelerate near the ground, and set your climb to a small angle. You won't be able to get the altitude advantage, but it's still good to have a chance to get extra speed in a dive. The tactics are simple. Fly straight and fast, catching those too involved in a turn fight. And remember to avoid turning yourself to preserve your speed. Frontal attacks are also okay. The Heinkel has good chances thanks to convenient gun placement and a tiny profile. Your most dangerous threat is late prop planes attacking from above. They usually have enough speed to get close, so keep both of your eyes on them and keep your distance. This German aircraft can't boast many advantages, but its position helps it use those that it has to the fullest. It's almost the only jet in a prop environment. One could enjoy this uniqueness, don't you think? Besides, it has an original looking design. Time to get it ready for another fight. More and more often we hear that tanks are becoming a thing of the past. Indeed, tanks already had a lot of issues before, getting stuck in the mud, blown up by landmines, and destroyed by cannons, and it's gotten even worse now. Enemy drones are up in the air 24-7. They can detect any kind of armored vehicle in no time and attack it with guided missiles. Tanks are also expensive, but no matter how much armor you add, they can't live long. What's the point then? Right? Well, we need to admit that tanks have always been vulnerable. Strong cannons, like the German 88mm or the Soviet A-19, could destroy any contemporary vehicle. Armor on World War II tanks couldn't keep up with artillery, while high explosive and sabotaged rounds developed soon after made homogenous steel plates useless. And yet, tanks persist. You see, strong cannons were expensive and hard to make, so they'd always been scarce. Their size and mass also made them heavy to transport by regular trucks. As a result, the already rare large-caliber cannons were often late to battles, getting stuck in the mud or soft soils, destroyed in air raids, or artillery strikes. Time went on and brought in a new threat. Guided missiles. What's new with those? 
Well, unlike large heavy cannons, missile launchers are quite lightweight and compact. They can also be placed pretty much anywhere. Helicopters, planes, drones, regular cars, and even soldiers' shoulders. Cannons can lag behind the tank column and arrive late, while aircraft will always be able to catch up with tanks and outrace them. Shoulder-fired missiles can be hidden quite literally in any bush. Moreover, guided missiles don't need to target the thick frontal armor. Instead, they can hit thin roofs. And making a roof safe from HE missiles is simply impossible. Even reactive armor isn't enough. It also needs regular armor thick enough to absorb the remains of the shaped charge. However, roofs are usually thin, and making them thicker would significantly increase the mass. Besides, hatches and grills are going to remain vulnerable anyways. Is there anything to do? Well, if you can't defend yourself against a missile hit, you need to prevent it from happening. And there are a couple of options here. Laser warning systems can automatically shoot smoke grenades towards the threat to disrupt homing. Alternatively, an active protection system can intercept the missile. We see those more and more on modern tanks. One thing though, you can only take so many smoke grenades and countermeasures. A tank may fend off a couple missiles, but there's no chance for it under heavy fire. Does that make the tank obsolete? No. To start that heavy fire, you need self-propelled launchers, and those are easily detected by recon units, which makes them easy to hit with any means available. Detecting a shoulder-based launcher in a random bush is hard, but such ambushes might not be a big issue, since a tank can deflect them on its own. And here's the obvious conclusion. The best defense for modern tanks and the key to their survival is coordination between army units. If reconnaissance finds enemy cannons and launchers on time, the artillery will be able to suppress them, and the attacking tanks will suffer lower losses. If the enemy can launch missiles with impunity, it's hardly the tank's fault. Any kind of vehicle can be lost in such a case. And that's why tanks are still in service, despite all the idle talk. The Phantom family has been featured in the shooting range multiple times before, but we have yet to talk about their suspended armament. Meanwhile, all F4s can boast a wide choice and, more importantly, an enormous number of weapons combinations. We'd like to talk about the best of them today. Let's discuss air combat first. Now, there isn't much to say about the drop tank, just that you should take it every time you can. The Phantoms are pretty fuel-hungry, especially with the afterburner on. The air-to-air -air missiles are easy to pick on most modifications, four Sidewinders and four Sparrows. Still, there are some interesting exceptions. For instance, the American F-4J and F-4S can swap out the rear aspect AIM-9 with up to two additional AIM-7Fs, one of the best radar-guided missiles in the game. It would be a wise decision, considering the advanced radar systems those aircraft have. The Kurnas aircraft also have something special in their air-to-air -air arsenal. The early version's four most hardpoints, the ones meant for the Sparrows, can have additional Sidewinders. Should you pick those over medium-range radar-guided missiles, albeit average ones? Arguable. Still, we think some would prefer this option. The Kurnas 2000 can't carry Sparrows at all, but instead it can have up to six new Israeli Python 3 missiles. You can also pick extra countermeasure pods for the rear hardpoints. Gun pods are also a great option for the Phantoms. They're essential for models without fixed armament, and we also recommend you take them into all air battles. It doesn't affect the number of your missiles anyway. Besides, Phantoms with fixed armament and gun pods are true firepower monsters. Their one-second burst mass can reach a whopping 40 kilograms. Well, some people may consider this redundant, so it's up to you how many guns you want. Now, next on our talk are mixed battles, and we'll need to dive deeper here. Sets with gun pods are great against enemy air defenses. Just turn on your ballistic computer for the cannons, fly super low, and rise over the enemy spawn point from an unexpected direction. Three gun pods provide such a thick wave of bullets that you can drown the anti-air gunners. Overall, it's a cheap and super efficient set for mixed battles. Now, conventional bombs and rockets have a special place in the arsenal of the Phantoms. 
There are planes capable of carrying a similar load, but all of it together and in such numbers, that's exclusive for the Phantoms. We don't even want to try and count how many combinations the F-4 can have. Here's an estimate, it's in the millions. Of course, you could discard obviously useless, weird, and dumb ideas, but the number will still remain super large. So we'd like to focus on a few of the most interesting types of ordnance and give you a few hints on where to place them. When you want some bombs, you'd be better off with calibers between 500 and 1,000 pounds. These have the best ratio of number available and required accuracy. As for where to put them, just pick the pylons that can carry the highest number of them. Next are rockets, and the best ones are the Zuni. Put them close to the center line of the aircraft to improve accuracy. All that's left is to use your imagination and make a set. Bombs, rockets, gun pods, and of course, some AAMs. We don't want to stay here all night. So can our editor please show us a few good options? The Phantoms also have guided munitions, but that's a topic for some other video. Let's just watch all 14 planes of this family fly together. And now we'll answer some of your questions from the comments. The first question was sent by a player called Doodlesore Games. Bought the British Wyvern a while back, but I'm still getting shot down by AA from long distances, and I can't escape fighters. Any tips? Hi there, Doodle! At the Wyvern's BR, a good tactic against AA is to attack from a high altitude at a sharp angle. This would make it harder to detect and attack you while also making your own attack convenient. Hitting a target in a vertical dive is easy with any weapon. As for fighters, they shouldn't be a big issue, since the Wyvern is one of the fastest aircraft at its BR. Try to keep your speed up and fly away in a straight line near the ground in case of danger. Genchar69 asks, So where's the A-10's titanium tub? Since you added the Su-25T and Su-39 armor, it's only fair for both A-10's to get this armor. Hello, the A-10 has always had its armor. Just check the X-ray or protection analysis mode. Another question comes from Missing Link 2626. In jet aircraft, does going to a higher altitude make your fuel burn slower? Hi, Missing Link. The same rules apply to both jet and piston engines. Air becomes thinner with altitude, and the engine starts to suffocate. To keep fuel burn optimal, the feed rate is reduced proportionally to the oxidizer, which is oxygen. This reduces fuel consumption and the output power as well. As a result, you get a tricky relationship. Both power and air drag drop. If you climb even higher, the wing will also stop working properly. That's why if you want to save fuel, you need to find an altitude that reduces air drag as much as possible while still having enough power and lift to keep flying possible. Sariot writes, What's the best tactic for Tyran 4S and Tyran? Hi there! Why don't you check out episode 303? You can find the Tyran 4S in the Metal Beast section there. And the last comment for today was written by El Gabor. Is there any chance that air refueling is going to be added into the game? Hi, El Gabor. It's an option, of course, but we don't really see them as part of the gameplay at the moment. Only top jets have issues with fuel, and those are easily fixed with drop tanks. Moreover, it's much safer to refuel at your base, defended by the AA, than mid-flight. That's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to write Snailware Update, leave a like, share your thoughts and comments, and see you next week. <laughs>